Hi, this is Ron Martz at ronmartblog.com, and we're here today to test out the Perfect Suite Photo Suite by On One Software. Now, this is the second of two videos I'm doing, and for this one here, we're going to go ahead and go to the desktop and open up an existing PSD, of which I've done a little work in Photoshop to get it prepped for this. Now, this is a file that was created in Photoshop CS5. Uh, the PC. I'm editing on the Mac. Works on both platforms. And um, just wanted to show some of the things we can do here. So we start off, I uh, have a default layer um, here in perfect layers. And let's go ahead and go over to effects. Perfect effects used to be called photo tools. And now what we can see is down here there's all the different types of effects that are offered. And you have real time previews down below. So if I wanted to come in here and say let's adjust the color and tone and I wanted to do something like increase the saturation, make it a little more vibrant, I could do that. If I felt like hey that's good but maybe a little too overdone, I can come over here to the strength and adjust that down so that it's still vivid but maybe not quite as much. I wanted to add another filter, I could click add. And then now what I can do is I can come over here, take a look at something else, like total contrast here. And if I hover over it, this is odd, if I hover over it um, with the trackpad, it'll show me a little preview. If I hover over it with a Wacom tablet, for some reason that doesn't really give me the uh, preview unless I move the Wacom pin uh, out of the uh, viewable range of the tablet and then it uh, acts the same way. But the idea is here is that you can get real-time uh, previews of what the effect would look like. This is a huge improvement over uh, photo tools which never had uh, the ability to show you what was going to happen before um, the work was applied. And actually in that product it was also done via a um, action so it was rather slow so things are a lot better now so I'm gonna try out tonal contrast see what I think about that if I go over here to turbo boost I can try that one as well and see the difference between the two um, and you notice that it really darkened out the edges maybe that's good maybe that's bad it's kind of you know uh, users taste here I kinda of go back and forth and see which one I really like the most um, for this exercise I'm gonna go ahead and go back and forth and probably stick with tonal contrast just so we can show you a few other things. Um, again, this is all a taste. If I decided, you know what, I'm not really crazy about um, what I did back here with the increased saturation, um, I could go ahead and delete that out of here. And I could put my tonal contrast back. So there's some really cool stuff that we can do with it back. Maybe I want it on 100%. Um, so this is really um, nice design uh, if you're using Nick Software's um, Color FX4. That's uh, sort of more advanced than that uh, ability. Um, if you come over here, <coughs> you can also um, <coughs> do a little bit of uh, adjustments with the uh, effects options. So um, it's certainly not um, just a trivial uh, layering mechanism. There's actually quite a bit you can do. You can change the blending. So um, if I wanted to do anything else, I could. Um, let's see if there's anything else that sounds interesting to me. I usually stay in the basic mode. And we'll say add just in case we decide we want to do something else. So let's go over here to photo filters. textures we can play around with some of the textures oh yeah I remember a cool texture I liked there's one somewhere I think I saw called snow 
that's pretty cool. Not sure where that one actually went. That was pretty fun one. I think it was maybe landscape. Yeah, blizzard. This one's pretty fun. So put it in first. It looks pretty overdone. That's the beauty of sliding this down. I can kick this down to maybe around 20%. It actually seems like it might really be snowing. Um, even less, maybe 10%, 11%. Um, it's a really subtle effect, but it's like, wow, they're doing hot air, hot air balloons in the snow. It's crazy. So just for fun, we're going to leave that in there. It cracks me up every time I see that. Um, so we're going to do an apply. Okay, and again, because we're using perfect layers, we can turn that layer off and turn it on. So, and because this is a full layer with no masking, they actually just turn this off by default. Um, but you can leave it on; it's up to you. So now um, we can use focal point. Now, if we use uh, focal point, actually, before we do anything, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to call this two. And this is actually saving it to a PSD file. And I'm going to come over here to focal point. And see, now it's actually going to launch it. Now, this isn't quite as integrated as the other one was, but that still works. So you see here at focal point, um, we can move this thing around, we can kind of resize it and so on. Um, but I have it pretty much maxed out from what I played with this earlier. And so there's not much more I can do around here in the edges, but we're going to take care of that in a minute. But let's say if I narrow this guy up, so let's just do it around just the balloons. So now we can paint in and out using the focus brush in here, but I'm going to do it a different way just for kicks and giggles. So we're going to say apply. Now we have our focal point layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to go create a mask here. So I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to paint out that effect on this balloon. And how precise you do this is kind of user preference. I want to make sure my balloons are all nice and clear. fake if I don't. I'm going to leave those guys blurred out though just because I don't want them to really be um, part of the attention. So now you can see over here, I come over here to, uh, let's see, I think it's grayscale. You can see exactly how the mask is being applied. And if I do overlay, you'll see where I've applied my layer mask. If I decide I want to add a little bit more, I can actually paint in this mode. So you kind of get an idea how this works. And if you want to come along here, maybe you know, with a different opacity, um, you can certainly do that. I can come in here and say, let's maybe do a 36% opacity. It's just randomly picked. Let's see, maybe I'll bring these people in a little bit better. A little through here, a little through here, a little through here, a little through there. So now, I'm going to get rid of my overlay, put the composite. You can see that. Now, if I go back to 
my grayscale mask, you can see this isn't quite the same opacity. It's just like in Photoshop, if you paint over uh, an area more than once, it's going to get darker. So something to keep in mind. So um, I can also change my blending modes. I can, um, just like in Photoshop, not quite as many options, but you can uh, certainly do that. Um, and now if I want to go ahead and Let's just say I want to do what we do in Photoshop, where we uh, merge to a new layer. So I'm going to say new layer from composite. And what that does is it takes everything below it and puts it into a new layer. And I'm just going to call this composite. I don't have to do that, but just for the sake of argument, I'm doing it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to frame this. And this is going to use photo frame. Now, I can use any kind of frame I want. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time sorting through frames, so let's just randomly choose this one here and say add frame and you can see in here how this works so I make my size negative and makes it a little smaller and again this taste this frame may not be to your taste they have a lot of frames that are really cool but I'm just playing around here just to show you some things that are possible say apply So now, see I have the acid burn frame, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save. Actually, I'll just close this, and it'll prompt me to save. And just so you can see, um, this is a Mac. Book Pro previous generation, uh, 2.66 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM, uh, running the latest version of Lion at the time this was recorded, with all system updates. Now, if I come over here to Photoshop, Photoshop is not required, but it's fully this product's fully compatible with Photoshop. So if I come in here, say OK. You'll see that. Um, all my layers that I had before, including even my layer mask, are all intact. So it's pretty cool you can see what's possible. And let's say for whatever reason I wanted to move this around. I can do that. I can you know, crop it. I can do whatever really I wanted to do. Let's say I wanted to add a layer mask and get rid of some of it. So let's come in here. See, I don't like what it's doing right here. Don't touch my balloons. Let's say I don't really like that. I don't really like that. Okay, now that's what I want it to look like. Now I can come in here, close it leave it open too, but smart to go ahead and only have it open one app at a time. I probably should hit that area too. But we'll actually show you something there. So now we're going to save it. And ironically, Photoshop always feels a little bit slower at saving than one one does. Sweet. Oops. And let's open that guy up. It's 
smoking fast opening and saving. There you can see that change. And let's show you. Hey, I forgot to do this over here. Oops, still set to a wide low opacity. Want my 100% opacity. I can come along and fix that however I want it. So you see, the products are completely interchangeable, and everything's nice and integrated in here. If I wanted to do a complex mask, I could use Perfect Mask. If I wanted to um, come in and resize, I could use uh, Resize. Everything's really uh, very nicely integrated in this. So I'm a huge fan of the new Perfect Photo Suite 6 um, and all the integration that's here. Um, there's certainly some things I'd love to see in the future, but from what I understand, those are in the works. And uh, so it's a great start, and some cool things are going to be coming down the pipe in some of the uh, upgrades, free upgrades. Um, I should add some. There's going to certainly be a little more work being done before you're asked to shell out more money. So I um, hope you enjoy it, and have a happy holidays.